hello so today we are going to discuss upon a topic called random forest so for learning around a random forest uh, we have certain topics we should uh, keep in mind or basically we can say that these are the prerequisite for random forest first one is decision tree next we have some terminologies and formulas related to decision trees basically which are green impurity uh, entropy uh, okay there is one more term called information gain right and apart from that we have also certain things like pure and impure split okay so these are the things which you must keep in mind while learning a uh, random forest and apart from this before we move on to the discussion with ensemble uh, random forest we have one more thing that is ensemble techniques it is what ensemble techniques okay so basically there are two types of ensemble techniques uh, one is bagging and another one is boosting okay so and so uh, let's let me tell you what the flow of the videos or we can take topics which will be following so as i told you we will be going first through decision tree then we'll learn about ensemble techniques then we'll move to random forest then we'll do some practical implementation using python right okay so uh, uh, beginning with the first topic uh, probably it will take uh, uh, not much time revising this topic. I uh, will quickly move to random forest. Beginning with the first topic in our discussion, that is called decision trees. Okay. So what are decision trees? So as the name suggests, they are the tree or trees representation. So you might have learned decision trees in your uh, data structures and algorithms. So it's very easy to visualize trees. Basically, there is some parent node and every parent node maybe someone's child node or maybe a root node and every node has its children so this example i have drawn is it's called binary tree because it's have two children for uh, every node there are also other trees like n arrays trees where you have n children for a node maybe two three it may be variable okay so what is the use of decision tree or basically what problems we can solve with decision tree these are nothing but classification and regression problems so just a quick recap of what regression and classification are so regression is very simple to understand for regression we have an input and we have continuous output okay so uh, one example is for example we have age or experience as input okay and we get salary as output so this is an example of regression so one example for regression is like uh, you have let's say 10 years of experience so let's say you have a 1.5 crore rupees package okay or you have let's say five years of expression so let's say you have 50 crore of package so you know so it, it it contains very continuous output it can be anything like one crore 50 thousand 50 lakh 50,500 or maybe 1.4 crore 20 lakhs or something anything okay so anything any number anything uh, can be predicted with the help of regression okay next we have classification 
the classification will go classification right so as the name suggests we have some input and we'll basically divide this input into some classes maybe like class a b c etc etc so one example if it's very popular example it's iris data set okay or plant data set you can say one example like you have certain plant and you have its sepal and petal length okay it's very popular data set and you need to classify into plant 1 plant 2 and so on basically you have some inputs in the form of features a sepal and petal length and you have some classes and these classes are finite in number finite in number okay so this is about uh, the classification now next thing we will discuss is about guinea impurity okay guinea impurity and entropy so before learning this terms we must first know why they are being used so what we have for example we have a tree okay we have this tree forgive me for my drawing i think that's pretty good but okay so let's say we have nine yes and six no we are considering a binary classification problem okay binary classification so let's say we have nine uh, six nine yes and six nos and for this node we have let's say three yes three nos and for this node we have six yes and zero no okay so what what basically these are used for these are used for purity testing purity testing so what purity is the question comes into my why what purity is so purity is nothing but here you can see there are all yes and zero no so in case if at any position you have either all yes or all no this is called a pure split pure split and this in turn which you have mixture of yes and no this is called impure split impure split i hope i made my point clear okay so next thing we are going to look is uh, at how you can evaluate so basically i have already tell you that pure or impurity will be checked by green impurity or entropy ठीक है सो फॉर ग्रीम प्योरिटी वी है मैथमेटिकल फॉर्मूला नोन इज वन माइनस समेशन पी स्क्वायर ओके एंड फॉर एंट्रोपी वी हैव फॉर्मूला एच ऑफ एस व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एंट्रोपी पी प्लस लॉग पी प्लस माइनस पी माइनस लॉग पी माइनस बेसिकली दिस इज फॉर बाइनरी क्लासिफिकेशन गाइस सो डोंट कंफ्यूज इट विद दैट इट विल बी नॉट दैट मच डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड पी प्लस इज बेसिकली द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ गेटिंग यस And P minus basically possibility of getting no. Uh, if you have any doubt, you can just do a check out the decision trees video. Uh, you will be clear about it. What I am talking about, so uh, it might be clear. I just gave a mathematical intuition of what these are, how purity is tested uh, using mathematical functions. Uh, why it is impure important? Uh, because we want to check the purity. And which uh, one question might come to your mind that which is efficient? So obviously, Gini impurity is efficient than entropy. why because we here we are doing simple mathematical calculation okay just squaring things and subtracting it from one here we are performing log operation so log operations are basically computationally expensive because uh, every time you have to uh, run log function and log function basically does it what checks with the log table or something like that so it's very computation uh, computationally expensive so if you want to use your model efficiently you must go with gini impurity in most of the cases otherwise specifically needed entropy right so this is about gini impurity and entropy okay now we are moving to our next topic which we have discussed in the slides it is called ensemble techniques okay wrong line okay so ensemble techniques 
So first question before learning ensemble techniques that why ensemble techniques or basically what are ensemble techniques? Why ensemble techniques? Okay, so for the reason for using ensemble techniques that like okay, there is a problem with traditional machine learning models. The problem is that when you use machine learning models, so they are there are some issues with the classical models. Like for example, you consider a decision tree. Okay, it causes problem of overfitting. Okay, overfitting, you know, I'll explain uh, 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 a bit later. Uh, and another problem is that it might be problem when there is a, there is some data given to you. You have single model M1. Okay, and maybe the possibility that you train this the model on this data and this it might not uh, it it has let's say F1, F2, and Fn features. It might not learn some of the features. Okay, so training problems maybe you can say in simple term training problems. So these type of scenarios when either overfitting is happening or maybe the your model is unable to learn some of the features. This is called uh, the problem which gave birth to ensemble techniques. So what is overfitting? Just a quick uh, recap of what overfitting is that it is called low bias and high variance. Okay, low bias and high variance. So what basically means that your model is performing well on training, well on training data and not that good on test. Okay, you might have seen examples like uh, these are the graphs and uh, your model is trying to fit all the points but when you have actual testing points, it doesn't perform well. So this is the problem of overfitting. Uh, not be able to learn feature this, that's another for, uh, problem which i have mentioned this is because your data might get so large that if you feed into that small model it might miss out on some features on classification so these are the problems which give birth to ensemble techniques okay and uh, i have already told you that what uh, basically low bias and high variance next we can think that uh, what ensemble techniques are so they are basically two types of ensemble techniques ensemble techniques okay one is bagging and another is boosting so for bagging we have our random forest classifier and regressor both okay and for boosting there is ada boost xg boost and gradient boost so don't worry guys I i'll be explaining you all of these uh, what these are and uh, so obviously we are learning random forest for sure both classification and regression so that's why we have you we should must have knowledge about ensemble techniques that what they are what basically they do and how they function so that we can get a better understanding of random forest okay so next thing is what bagging we'll start off with bagging So simple points you must consider while learning bagging is like multiple models are being used and they work simultaneously okay why they are being there are multiple models and working simultaneously to achieve to achieve better performance Better performance. Right. So to let me write it clearly a bit to achieve better performance. Okay. So the issues like overfitting and uh, you know large depth and all this these all will be res resolved using bagging technique. So let's see how bagging works first. 
so let's say we have a classification problem classification problem and we need to see bagging that how it works so consider that assume that this is our data set okay not a very beautiful looking data set but i'll try this is our data set there are some features f1 f2 and up to fn okay these are some rows 1 2 3 and up to n so there are n data sets uh, basically data entries and n n features okay now in bagging what we'll do we'll have multiple models 1 2 3 and 4 and what we'll do we'll take out some rows from here and give to this model let's say some other rows and give this model some other rows and give to this model and some other rows and give to this model so let's say these multiple models are like for example one is decision tree another is naive bias one is logistic regression and another is let's say another decision tree so this is the technique what we are doing we are taking some d1 rows okay uh, let me write with another color let's say we take some d1 rows and give it to one model d2 rows and give it to another model d3 rows and give it to another model d4 rows and give it to another model and each and every model will learn on some of the features and let's say for some input it generates some output let's say 0 1 0 0 so these are the decisions made by each and every model and what we'll do to get the final output we'll do majority voting majority voting so obviously most of the models predicted zero so output will be zero so this is how bagging works okay there is one more thing what we have do we can do basically uh, here we have learned what is called row sampling there is one more option for dividing the data how to divide data just the question how to divide data we can do two things row sampling row sampling and feature sampling or one more thing both row sampling plus feature sampling so what these terms are let me show diagrammatically let's say this is our data set again not very beautiful this is what basically columns or basically features so let's say and this is what rows so basically our data entries so what we can see let's say we have multiple models one two three four we can generate permutations and combinations of this uh, let's say we took f1 and certain data entries and give it to this model let's say we took f2 and f4 and another data entry and give it to another model so this kind of formatization and combination we can generate and give it to our model to train different models to train basically okay this is a bit idea about uh, what bagging is let's learn about boosting okay boosting so in boosting what we do in bagging what we were doing we have models running parallelly okay so for example we have certain inputs we'll give that same input to all of the models and it will generate a different every model will generate different different outputs and will get output based on majority voting uh, okay one more thing i forgot to mention here if it was a regression thing then let's say we have uh, obviously continuous output let's say we have 15 16 17 16.5 at output so what we'll do we'll take the average and give the final output so that we can do for a regression case okay that that point i missed but now it's clear i think it's not very difficult to understand that in case of classification we'll do majority voting or in case of regression we'll be doing averaging of the all the output given by different models okay in boosting what's different here is we have series of models we are multiple we are having multiple models here we are giving input it's passing through each and every model and finally we are getting output so here we are providing input and on the other hand we are getting output we have multiple outputs m1 m2 m3 m4 and m5 let's say 
and let's say the for example consider that one is decision tree another is multinomial naive bias another decision tree logistic regression another decision tree okay so then each and every model will learn on some of the feature and give the final output which is obviously more accurate and correct than the previous one so how this happens these are basically what we call as let me use another color weak learners weak learners okay and each the series of these weak learners what it will do it will become a strong learner okay so when you connect series of weak learners okay try to understand when you connect series of weak learner you will get a strong learner so how it is happening basically you can consider as a real life example that you have for example a huge amount of weight okay let's say you have a huge amount of weight so if one person is trying to move that weight that it might not be possible but let's say you have so many people so many uh, like not that strong people who can lift it together but there are so many people and they coming up all together to lift this weight then it might be the case it will be lifted so here's the same case we have weak learners series of weak learners and that will ultimately give us give us a better output okay now how this basically happening as i have told you there are multiple models and let's say they are connected like this in series here is our input here is output and this is let's say our data set okay let's say f1 f2 and so on so each and every model what it will do learn on some of, some or other feature let's say this model learns on f1 let's say this model learn on f2 and f3 let's say this model learns on f5 this model learns on f4 so each and every model learn some of the features so that final model will learn all of the features okay so this is how it's happening for example uh, you have group of people with different abilities okay and you have to perform some big task okay you have to perform some big task so what the people will do according to their ability they'll try to learn their skill set and as a whole they'll apply the skill set to solve the problem right So this is how the boosting is happening. Be boosting, as the name suggests, each and every person, each and every component in the model is boosting towards getting the correct output. Right. Next, we have some examples of boosting. There is one called Ada Boost. Another one called XG Boost. And third one called Gradient Boost. so we learn two of them namely this ada boost and gradient boost in a very quick way and very easy way not to confuse you much so first first we'll go we'll go with ada boost okay ada boost ada boost so how this happen in ada boost we are having what called stumps this is stumps not talking like pitted stump but this is stump stumps and these stumps are what called weak learners and these are nothing but having two leaf node like each and every stump has in two nodes okay so basically this is what weak learners and each and every stump will learn on some feature let's say it learns of f1 it learns of f4 it learns on f2 so each and every stump will be trained on certain feature and will be responsible for predicting that feature and that's how these series of weak learners will become a strong learner so this is the basic instru institution about the ada boost right next we have uh, one more thing that is called gradient boost i'll uh, try to cover this as quick as possible because uh, and uh, you should keep in mind that this gradient boost thing is not well explained on internet as well uh, because uh, this is um, uh, usually people skip this part but i'll try to cover uh, in the easiest way possible uh, in a quick uh, quickest manner so let's say we have certain input x and another input y 
let's say let me change the variable name so it would make more let's say we have variable a and the variable y b and output y okay i think that's fine now based on these variable let's say this is 10 20 30 uh look at i take some better input 20 21 23 150 160 and 170 so basically let us consider this as a bmi and bmi to age data set so let's say for 28 the bmi is uh 150 and for uh, let's say let me rename this this is age and this is bmi for 21 is it is 160 for 23 we have 170 okay and based on that we have to predict certain thing okay maybe the height of the person let's say y is called y is what height so we have two input and we have one output basically this is a regression problem so what we are doing in general uh, uh, we can use a linear regression or multinomial linear, linear regression or maybe some similar regression model like that and we can predict it so what we'll do uh, we'll have our age and bmi as input and we'll try to predict our height so let's say how gradient boosting works we have uh, let's say we have some output here uh, let's say 155 so uh, for filling this out what we do we'll take some of this okay and try to average it so if we do 150 plus 160 plus 170 divided by 3 it's get 160 160 160 160 so let's say this is what we predict first time and apart from this we have we will have one more entry called y actual what basically actually the height of the person is let's say it's 155 162 and 168 okay so this is the predicted and this is the actual so if we subtract this we'll get our residual one r1 so this is basically what 5 2 uh, and 8 so if i consider this as positive let me consider this is negative and this is positive this is positive this is our residual one so now in next step what we'll do we'll try to train our this model m on this input and this residual and we'll get another prediction let's say this is called that is called residual 2 and let's say that is minus 4.8 1.5 and 8.2 okay so this what we are doing in next step first step we are having input we, ha we have input, we uh, predicted on uh, model and we'll get uh, compared with the actual output and then we'll get our residual one. Now with the help of these two features and this residual, we'll train our model again and we'll, we'll get another output, series of output that is called residuals. Now what we'll do in gradient boosting, we'll try to update the value. How will we update the video? We have new value we have new value equals to base value we are we are going to update based on this formula new value equals to base value plus alpha into residual 1 plus alpha into residual 2 so this is how we are going to update so what is base value this is the old value alpha is nothing but learning rate learning rate and this is red residual one and residual two that basically we are getting so what basically happening is the people are very uh, confused about that what we are doing by calculating different type of residuals uh, they don't they are unable to get the intuition as well and even i tried on internet that uh, that people will try to explain the intuition behind this gradient boosting but one more sim simplest explanation of gradient boosting is that if you have learned model like regression okay so in regression uh, what the problem was there there was a problem of overhitting fitting right so to avoid that what we used to do we use ridge and lasso regression ridge and lasso lasso and ridge okay so in what we were doing that we are ad adding some square term uh, let's say what we said it p or p square based on ridge or lasso 
what what was the function of that term it was it, the function of that term was to normalize so try to connect what we are doing as many stage let's say we stay uh, uh, added another stage alpha into r3 so the number of stages we'll add it will try to normalize it will try to normalize our model and by normalizing our model we are preventing overfitting okay so region lasso regression was introduced to do what avoid uh, this overfitting problem so the same thing is that in gradient boosting we are adding more and more stages to normalize our input and this is that is how our new value is being calculated okay and if you are a very keen observer you might have noticed that in each and every state this residual value will decrement because because each and every time we are having smaller and smaller value so after some some number of stages it will uh, become negligible so we don't take much of the stages but we can take three or four stages for this so this is how gradient boosting work i think i made it uh, a bit clear and uh, pretty much understandable for you to uh, learn that how all these things are working okay so this is this was all about um, uh, gradient boosting now next thing is that why we learn this why we learned this boosting and all so obviously the basic simplest answer that random forest is a bagging technique okay and to understand the difference between bagging and boosting so that you don't get confused uh, you must be very aware of this topic right so okay so what happens in random forest uh, in quick nutshell you have multiple decision trees working parallelly and you will be doing row sampling and feature sampling to avoid the overfitting problem and we'll get our output based on majority voting on the or the averaging okay this is the random forest we have multiple decision trees and that's that's about the random forest okay apart from that uh, will there are also some things like depth and all okay so i will be looking in the future video that uh, there are some terms i have already discussed in decision tree or you must be aware of that about pruning because in decision tree what can happen that if you don't restrict your tree to limit its height maximum depth and all it will grow up deeper and deeper and deeper and it will cause overfitting so this type of problem doesn't occur with random forest because it's a bagging technique each and every decision tree will be not much in height and every tree will be learning some or other features and that will enhance the performance of the your model okay now for the conclusion of this uh, video we have to see what coming next so something regarding cross validation is coming next cross validation is a technique and will be some doing some sample example sample example of random forest will be doing and let's see what comes next so thank you for this video see you next